So probably intuitively, you know, when we talk about this, that there's high humidity outside, we mean that there's, in the atmosphere, a lot of water vapor, a lot of water gas. But there are various ways of describing the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. And so we're actually, in the next few segments, we're going to be talking about the, those. I'm going to actually talk about these first three ways of describing water vapor in the atmosphere in this segment. So there's absolute humidity and mixing ratio. And what they have in common is basically they talk about the mass in grams of water vapor in the atmosphere per, um, and then per unit volume or per unit of dry air. That's how they differ. The next one I also want to talk about in this, in this short segment, hopefully, is, is the, the fact that those water molecules are exerting a pressure. And we can use kind of a, what we call a, a type of pressure gauge to, to selectively measure the, the vapor pressure of, or the, the pressure of the water. And then the other two, I'm going to kind of talk about those later. Um, generally speaking, we can talk about um, the relative humidity that's talking about, again, the water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere. Just to kind of give you a heads up, if you've um, been recording your weather log, you have been tracking the relative humidity. And for instance, if somebody says, man, it's humid out there, it's about 85% relative humidity, then actually it's about 85% a long way of, of becoming what we call the air saturated with water vapor. So that's how that works. The closer it is to 100% relative humidity, the more likely you're to get to some sort of condensation and precipitation. Dew point, actually, that's dew point temperature. And I think I've talked about that earlier. And we'll talk about that again as an indication of the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. So starting with these first two. And I mentioned that what absolute humidity and mixing ratio have in common is that they have a mass in grams of water vapor in the atmosphere. And with absolute humidity, what goes in the bottom or the denominator is the volume of, of air. In both of these cases, absolute humidity and mixing ratio, what we do is basically kind of define a parcel of air. We do that all the time in kind of wanting to understand the atmosphere. And when we define a parcel of air, to me, I kind of think of it, there's basically kind of a tentative boundary around that parcel of air. So for absolute humidity, basically we define our parcel of air. We, we, we calculate or measure, I guess I should say, the mass of the water vapor in that parcel of air. And then we divide by the volume of the parcel of air. And that's our absolute humidity. So here's the, here's the deal. As that volume of air changes, then so does the number in the bottom, the ratio, um, the, the denominator. So as the volume changes, and we're going to talk about an important aspect of what goes on the, in, in the atmosphere is parcels of air do change their volume. And we'll be talking more about that. So as, the vol as it changes volume, then um, so also the absolute humidity is going to change for that parcel of air. But notice that um, neither the mass of the water vapor nor the volume, per se, is, is directly influenced by changing temperature. So it's what we say independent of changing temperature. So mixing ratio, what it has in common with absolute humidity, a couple things, I guess, is you define a little parcel of air. And notice with mixing ratio, again, you measure the mass of the water vapor in grams. You put that number in the numerator. And in the denominator, what you put actually is for that same parcel of air, you put the mass of the dry air. So we talked about um, permanent gases and variable gases in the Earth's atmosphere. And um, actually, most of the sea of air we're walking in is nitrogen gas particles um, followed by oxygen. So when we talk about the mass of the dry air, if you want to kind of picture nitrogen and oxygen, you can. So the thing about the mixing ratio is since the bottom is just the mass of the dry air for that parcel, if that parcel of air swells, if its volume increases, or if that parcel of air, if it contracts, if its volume decreases, notice that it's going to have the same mixing ratio. So we say that mixing ratio is a way to express humidity um, that is independent of volume. Notice that it is also independent of temperature. So that's kind of helpful. So I really like this diagram. 
Um, so here we have a parcel of air. Can you see those cute little Mickey Mouse molecules? Those are H2O molecules, water vapor in there. If you look real closely, you can kind of see the, the little white wisps that are showing that it's in motion. Gases have a lot of kinetic energy, a lot of motion. So in this particular parcel, um, it's been tested and there are 20 grams of water vapor there. Um, in order to calculate the absolute humidity, we need the volume. The volume of that parcel is one cubic meter. Okay. So we can go ahead and calculate the absolute humidity by taking 20 grams divided by one cubic meter, which is the volume of our parcel of air. Its absolute humidity of that parcel of air is 20 grams per cubic uh, meter. Well, let's just say that we calculated the mass of the dry air in that same parcel and came up with that it is one kilogram. So now we can go ahead and calculate the mixing ratio for the same parcel of air. It would be that 20 grams of water vapor divided by one kilogram of dry air. So that's known as the mixing ratio. So I mentioned that um, an important aspect of of what happens in our atmosphere is that parcels of air are compressible and expandable. Okay? One of the things about parcels of air is as they go up vertically or ascend, they will get larger. And honestly, they get larger for something that we've already talked about, for a reason we've already talked about. In general, as you go up in any layer of the Earth's atmosphere, the pressure gets less and less. Okay. So as the pressure gets less and less, what happens is that parcel of air, which is, like I said, kind of a tentatively kind of confining those gas particles, um, as there's less uh, pressure on the outside of that parcel of air, that parcel of air wants to expand. And it will expand. And so we actually we kind of see this trend. When a chunk of air is rising, it expands. So now our chunk of air has expanded. Let's take a look now at the absolute humidity and mixing ratio of this parcel of air. Notice that there's been no water particle, excuse me, yeah, well, water vapor hasn't left the parcel of air, nor has any water vapor entered the parcel of air. It's only changed its volume. So we still have 20 grams of water vapor in our parcel. Now, its new volume is not one cubic meter, it's two cubic meters. So now that's going to change what the absolute humidity is in it. So now our absolute humidity is 20 grams of water divided by the new volume of two cubic meters. So the absolute humidity is 10 grams per cubic meter. So, but what does that do now to, for that parcel of air that's expanded, its mixing ratio? Well, its mixing ratio is going to be that 20 grams of water divided by the mass of the dry air, which is still one kilogram of dry air. So you can you see where the mixing ratio did not change, but the absolute humidity did. So one other way to measure water vapor is to basically, and, and, and I have a few things I want to talk about that use pressure gauges but is act actually to selectively measure the pressure exerted by water molecules that are in the air, in the gas in their gaseous phase. So I like this, this figure too. It's nice and big, hopefully, for you. And can you see the cute little Mickey Mouse particles? OK, remember, those are water molecules. That's the red oxygen atom and the two hydrogen atoms, and actually they kind of have a, that sort of bent orientation. And um, so then these red here, these reds that are together, those would be O2 molecules. Remember, I think I mentioned before that oxygen is an element that wants to always have a buddy. And then these green ones here are nitrogen gas. Okay, so I'm going to go put O2, G for gas, and N2. G for gas. So when we are kind of walking around this room, most of the gas particles we're running into are nitrogen, some are oxygen, and some are water vapor. Okay, so we can actually describe the pressure, P for pressure, of H2O. Okay, that's one way to talk about the vapor pressure of water. All right. So um, let me go ahead and 
finish these builds on here. So parcel of air, green or nitrogen, the red or oxygen, N2O2, and the ones that are the red with the two whites are water vapor. Um, so one of the things that, that gases do, to me it's kind of a characteristic, is if you have a gas mixture like this, actually all of the pressures, the pressure of um, the water, the pressure of, let me go ahead and put, oops, let's see down here, the pressure of the N2 nitrogen, um, the pressure of the O2 oxygen, okay, they all kind of work together to create an overall atmospheric pressure. I just think that is so cool. So I don't know if you can kind of see down here at the bottom, but I've added them or summed them together, and I'm going to put P total, okay, so.